Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, today, I'll be going over the aircraft oil and lubrication systems. In this presentation, I will be going over what aircraft lubrication actually is. Uh, I will be going over the purpose of oil and lubrication in an aircraft engine. I'll be going over uh, different oil types uh, used in aviation. Uh, I'll be going over what weights and viscosities mean. I'll be going over the types of oil systems, the two different types of oil systems. I'll be going over the monitoring gauges found in the cockpit of the aircraft. I'll be going over the specific uh, requirements for the PA-44 Seminole. Uh, also, I'll be going over the maintenance, uh, what's involved in maintaining an oil system. I'll be going over what oil analysis is and what the benefits are. And I'll be going over where to find the information regarding oils and systems uh, found. What is aircraft lubrication? Aircraft lubrication is the use of oil in aircraft engines to lubricate uh, uh, aircraft engines, and it's also used to cool down the engine and carry contaminants away from the parts of the engine. Uh, it involves the distribution of oil throughout an aircraft's engine through a pressure system. Uh, and filters, it also filters contaminants from the engine through filters and screens found in the system of the oil system. Purposes of oil include lubricating the engine components. Uh, it also provides the main source of cooling for an air-cooled piston engine in an aircraft. Uh, it carries contaminants away from the engine components because as uh, an engine runs, it uh, develops contaminants such as wear metals and deposits. And uh, in specific types of oils, this can be uh, kept in the oil itself and pumped away from the aircraft engine components and filtered through the filters. And it also provides a seal between the cylinder walls and the moving pistons of the engine. Uh, the different types of oils that you'll find in aviation oil are mineral oil, which is basically just uh, straight up oil found from the earth that's uh, put through a refinery process. Uh, it's usually measured only in one uh, weight or viscosity. Uh, there's full synthetic oils, which are man-made oils, which are basically not really used in uh, piston-driven engines. They're more used in turbine engines, so we won't be focusing as much on that. Uh, Semi-synthetic, which is a mix between mineral and man-made oil. And then the difference between uh, mineral, straight up mineral oil versus an aceous dispersant oil. Um, mineral oil is mainly used more in engine break-in periods. So when the aircraft's engine is new, within the first 100 hours, you want to be using mineral oil because it doesn't provide that uh, uh, contaminant carrying property away. Um, and this enables the engine to wear in. Uh, versus an ashless dispersant oil, which may, mainly means that uh, it actually contains the um, uh, wear materials inside the oil and is able to be pumped out of the engine. Uh, oil weight and viscosity, it's basically defined as the flow properties of oil in different temperatures. So uh, this is measured in SAE, which stands for Society of Automa uh, Automotive Engineers, or commercial aviation scale, which is measured in W. Uh, basically, usually uh, the W number in aviation is double what the SAE number is. Uh, and then um, in certain applications, additives are used to provide additional properties to aircraft oil, such as in the PA-44, uh, it's recommended in the maintenance schedule that you uh, use an additive every uh, oil change as well as the normal oil to provide that ashless dispersant uh, property in the oil. Uh, the two different types of oiling systems are wet sump and dry sump. A wet sump system is basically uh, the aircraft's oil is actually contained within the engine and it's pumped from the engine throughout, like, throughout the uh, rest of the engine, uh, pumped through a filter, uh, and then back down into the uh, uh, oil capacity area. And then the uh, dry sump system involves a separate supply tank that's on the outside of the engine. Uh, and it's pumped through oil pumps through the engine uh, 
sometimes through an oil cooler, or most of the time through an oil cooler to cool down the oil, uh, uh, through a filter, and then a scavenging pump will pick up that oil and put it back into the tank. Gauges, uh, there are two, uh, normally two different types of gauges, sometimes they'll be combined into one. Uh, but the two types of gauges are the oil pressure gauge, which measures the pressure of the oil system, uh, a lower <clears throat> a lower or higher uh, oil pressure could indicate uh, issues with the engine operation. Uh, and then the oil temperature gauge. Obviously, this is a pretty good indication of what the temperature of the engine's running at because uh, oil is uh, the main coolant of the engine. Um, so the specific requirements for the seminal uh, involve uh, the POH detailing that the capacity of each engine is eight quarts per engine. And the minimum uh, requirement of two quarts is actually uh, the minimum for safe operation of the engine without causing damage to the engine. Uh, it's recommended that you uh, maintain it at full for the uh, longer flights. Um, this uh, POH for this PA44 de uh, details that the uh, oil is to be drained and replenished every 50 hours with new oil. Uh, and also uh, an oil additive uh, labeled here is also supposed to be used for each oil change. Um, you're also supposed to replace the oil filter cartridges every 50 hours. Uh, this is a good practice to replace it every time you do an oil change, just like in a car. But sometimes uh, the maintenance intervals are separate, but it's not to be replaced uh, four months uh, in between oil changes. Viscosities uh, for the PA44 are listed below. So it lists the temperature ranges here. Uh, and then this is, this is the SAE grade when you're using a normal uh, mineral oil. Uh, so you can see as uh, the temperature increases, the SAE grade has to increase as well. And uh, this also details the uh, semi-synthetic and ashless dispersant uh, SAE grades. Uh, these up here are for all temperatures basically in a normal operating engine. But if you know you're gonna be operating within certain temperature ranges, then different types of uh, viscosities can be used. Uh, you can see here that there's some uh, oils that range in viscosity. So when the engine is colder, uh, it'll be a 20 weight oil versus when the engine warms up, it'll become a 40 weight oil. This means that the oil flows uh, differently in different uh, temperatures. Uh, maintenance of the oil system involves regular changes according to the pilot's operating handbook of the oil and filters. Uh, you just want to follow the maintenance schedule provided by the pilot's operating handbook and the maintenance care sheet. Uh, you're going to be also, before each flight, during a pre-flight, going to be checking for oil leaks on the ground under the cowling or under the cowling as part of the pre-flight. Uh, this is kind of a good indication that uh, there's some issues with the oil oiling system. Uh, you're also going to be checking the oil level during each pre-flight. Uh, this is to make sure that there's enough oil in the engines and you're going to be uh, operating them in safe conditions. Uh, especially if you have a longer flight, you want to make sure that that oil level is more full. Uh, and you're also going to want to be making sure that you're using the correct oil and viscosity that's recommended in the POH of the specific aircraft that you're flying. So, for example, in the PA44, it's recommending uh, for normal, it has a specific oil and uh, SAE grade. Uh, and then here, a specific oil uh, that's an ashless dispersant type. That's a normal millinery oil, and that's an ashless dispersant oil. Uh, and you can use these temperature uh, ranges or SAE grades, viscosities. Uh, oil analysis is a good preventative maintenance measure that you can take when you change the oil. Uh, you can analyze the oil that you just took out of the airplane's engine using a, spe a spectrometer to measure wear metals 
So basically, as the engine's running, it's depositing uh, metals into the oil. Uh, this is normal. Uh, there's a certain normal range of wear metals that are supposed to be in an oil. Uh, and you can be checking the filters, too, to make sure that there's not an abnormal amount of oil. Uh, so this can predict problems with premature wear of engine components, like, for example, cylinder walls. Like, if they're wearing prematurely or wearing down, uh, you'll see more oil in the filters when you change them, or you'll see more oil in the uh, spectrometer reading, or you'll see more metal in the spectrometer reading. Uh, there are usually three different places that you can find this information for the, uh, regarding the oil and the viscosities and the certain uh, oil change intervals. Um, most of the information can be found in the pilot's operating handbook of the uh, aircraft itself. For example, I, I have the uh, PA44 Seminole that Gateway uses right here. Uh, it can also be found in the maintenance handbook for the aircraft. Uh, this is more how to perform the uh, oil change and what to use when you're using the oil or when you're doing the oil change. And it also, uh, inside the aircraft, there's a placard that says what viscosity the oil you should be using is. Uh, these are my sources for uh, this presentation, I use the pilot's operating handbook. I use, also use the Gateway Progressive Care Inspection Report, uh, specifically the PA44 inspection uh, sheet. And then I use the various websites uh, detailing about engine lubrication from experimental aircraft and in info, uh, flightliteracy.com slash oil systems, aopa.org slash uh, all about oils, and then plane at pilotmag.com, uh, there's more to oil than you think and AOPA.org, uh, Flight Training Magazine, uh, Engine Gauges. Thank you for watching my presentation.